just, I'm amazed how good God is, even in the midst of the storm. Because I'm going to tell you something. The devil tried everything he could this morning to keep that from happening. When over half, well, about half of the praise and worship team on the way to church got a flat tire and couldn't even change it because they don't, they've got a lot on the tire. I said, not, not today. Not today. Not today. If I got to come and pick you up on a horse to get you there, we're getting you to church because this is where we're supposed to be. Y'all pray for that church, that truck that is still on the side of the road. But well, God's going to take care of everything. You know why? Because today, Sunday came. He is risen. And we will not be bound by no grave. Amen. We will come running out of that grave when the time comes. Amen. <laughs> Sunday. <coughs> I want us to pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this Easter Sunday. Lord, we just ask for you to rain down the Holy Ghost down here in this place this morning. Lord, we just ask you to rain on each and every person in your house this morning. Lord, we thank you today for everything that you had to endure for us to pay for our sins. Lord, we thank you for our salvation this morning. Lord, we thank you for this time and day in which we're living. We thank you for the experiences that you're showing up right on time in this day and hour. And Lord, we ask you today just to bless this service. Lord, use me as a mighty tool and vessel to spread forth your gospel in your house today. This is your ministry, and I'm speaking your word through you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Happy Easter, everybody. He is risen. Friday was here, but Sunday came. Amen. Have you ever wondered what was so good about Good Friday? Have we ever wondered? Why does everybody call it Good Friday when Jesus died on the cross? What was so good about that Friday? What is a good thing about Friday when, the, when there was a torturous death on the cross of our <coughs> Savior? What was so good about that Friday? It's easy to think of Good Friday as a dark day. It was a day Jesus died on the cross for our sins. But it's also a day of good news. Yes. Jesus' death on the cross provided the way for our relationship to the Lord. Amen? Amen. That provided our one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Lord. <laughs> he start, it started on a Thursday. After the Last Supper, they came and they arrested Jesus. Right in front of the disciples. Jesus endured mockery. He was beaten. He was spat on. He was ridiculed with a robe and a crown of thorns. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell you today that this message that I'm about to preach is very graphic. But I want to paint to you a picture of what happened on that Friday leading up to Sunday. Because see, a lot of times we, we, we thank God for dying on the cross, but do we really understand what he endured on that cross? Do we really understand why he went to the cross and died? Because see, he didn't have to. He didn't have to do any of that. But my Lord loved us so much. Amen? He had on his back lacerations from a whip called the Roman, also known as the Cat of Nine Tails. He was whipped, and it did more than just break the skin. It tattered the flesh. <coughs> now I'm going to tell you something about the Cat of Nine Tails. You and I, and anyone that I have ever met in my life, could never endure the beating, let alone they said his bones were exposed from a beating. Now you would say, Pastor, why do you have to be so graphic? Because I want you to understand how much Jesus loved you. I want you to understand today that he did every bit of 
this for you and I. Amen. It was a horrible weapon, the cat of nine tails. Then after all of that, Jesus began his walk to God off his hill with his own cross upon his back. Now I'm going to tell you, I watched, we were, we were in the cabin this week and I think it was Thursday, maybe it was, maybe it was Friday. But I began to watch the Passion of the Christ. Has anybody ever seen that? Do you remember when he was on the cross? Do you remember where he walked down the streets going to Galgotha? And, you know, the movies don't do it justice because the Bible said he was unrecognizable. Nobody could recognize who Jesus was because he had been beaten and he had the crown of thorns. I just want you to imagine right now going outside and going to those beautiful rose bushes and sticking your finger. It's not really beautiful after you stick your finger, is it? No. It hurts. You don't think about that beautiful rose anymore. You think about the thorn that's just poked you in the finger, and you don't have really good godly thoughts after being poked in the finger by a rose bush. Now, I want you to take that times 100. You look behind me in the baptism pool on that cross is a crown of thorns. You see that crown of thorns? That actually came from Israel. And that crown of thorns represents where they took that upon Jesus' head and smashed it down into his head, and blood began to run. That was just the start. Then he had to take his cross up to Galgotha's hill. It was very heavy, and he knew that he was about to be nailed to it. Jesus suffered the storm of shame and the cross of punishment unto criminals on the cross. Jesus was publicly humiliate, humiliated and shamed. He was also stripped naked. See, a lot of people don't see that because we only imagine what we see in the movies. Jesus suffered a horrible death. The pain of unattended wounds and the unnatural position of his body on the cross. I want you to imagine this, standing in one place on both your feet with your arms out. After about two minutes, you, your body starts to hurt. And you don't have spikes in your hands, nor your feet. Now you think about Jesus being nailed to the cross, up on the hill of Golgotha, hanging from a cross, in such a way that he had already been beaten beyond recognition. He was now nailed to the cross and now he is having to endure being there on the cross. But he said one thing on the cross at the end. He cried out and he said, it is finished. What an awesome an amazing promise to you and I. Amen. It is finished. The price for our sins was paid in full by Jesus that very day on the cross. So I want you to think about everything that you've done and you've asked God to forgive you from. God has already paid the price that day. Amen. Amen. The price was paid in full. It is finished is a declaration of victory, not defeat. Yes, Lord. God won that day. Devil lost. God won that day. Devil lost. God won that day. Satan lost. Amen. It is finished. What is Good Friday about? Why did Jesus do all of that? Why did he allow himself to suffer? Why did Jesus die on the cross? He had to, he could have just walked away. He could have pushed them all out of the way. He didn't have to endure it any of it. But why did he do that? Because he loved you so much. Because he loved me so much. That's why I am in awe of the greatness of the love that Jesus has for me. The redeeming love. If you have your Bibles this morning, I'm going to take you to a passage you've probably never ever seen in your entire life. I'm 
want you to turn to John chapter 3 and verse 16. How many times have we seen it on billboard sign? How many times have we seen it tattooed on somebody's body somewhere? How many times have we seen it? John 3, 16. John 3, 16. But have we ever really read John 3, 16? John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him, who shall ever believe in him? That's you or I. Whoever believeth in him should not perish. That means not to die, but to have everlasting life. That means life forever. And then verse 17 says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Pastor Shane, you preaching a message on salvation. You got it. I am. Amen. I'm preaching a message today on salvation. Because, see, it tells us in 316 that he so loved us that he died on the cross, that he endured every bit of that so that you and I didn't have to. He did that so that our sins were paid in full. And that we will never, if we accept Jesus into our heart, that we will never have to die. Amen. We just transition. Yeah. Well, Pastor says in the Bible that it is appointed for <coughs> everyone to die. You're exactly right. And did you know in 1992, I died. I died. And now I'm starting to live. Yeah. But I will truly live. When I transition over into heaven. Yes. Because in 1992, this old body full of sin transitioned into a saved body. Yes. I died from the old and began the new, amen. Yes. And you know what? It is so easy for us to do, but we've made it so hard. The only thing that we have to do is ask God to enter our heart and ask Him to save us and wash us from our sins forevermore yes. and live for Him. Live for him. Amen. Holy, amen. But that's all we have to do. It is in it amazing that he loves us enough to die for us. Amen. Would you die for someone else? Let me ask you, is there anybody in here that would say, Pastor, I would die for the world? I'm your pastor, and it would be hard for me to raise my hand. Because all you have to do is get in the vehicle and realize how rude and how mean people are on the road. All you have to do is walk into a department store and realize how rude and mean people are. All you have to do is go into a church house and realize how rude and mean people can be. Amen, Pastor Shane. That's so true. Some of the meanest, rudest people you'll ever meet is going to be at restaurants the day after church. They call themselves Christians. <laughs> Amen, Pastor Shane! But it don't have to be that way. See, when we realize what Jesus did for us, all those mean and rude bones in our body will disintegrate. Amen. They will fly out of us because we are not promised the very next breath in our body. Amen. We are not promised the very next miracle that may happen to us. Right. We are not promised the very next blessing that God's about to do for us. We are not promised anything. And if we don't get anything else from here on out, we're the most blessed people in the world. Amen. Isn't it amazing that he loved us so much? He set us free from the punishments of our sins to restore you unto a real living relationship with him, to give the assurance that you have a place in heaven. 
He died so that you can live a freedom and free from sin life. He died to save you from a lost eternal hell. Amen. Do we realize how real hell is? Because see, I have heard all my life from people that party. They think, I'm going to hell and I'm bringing my friends with me. No ma'am, no sir, you have no friends in hell because there is no such thing. The only thing you're going to have there is pure torment. The only thing you're going to have there is pure fire torment for the rest of eternity. Does anybody know how long eternity is? Because see, if we're lucky here, we get 70, 80, 90 years. If we're really lucky, we get 100. But that's not eternity. Eternity is forever. Or we can spend eternity with our Father who freed us from sin, Amen. who forgives us from everything, Amen. and says, come on in, child. Well done, my good and faithful Amen. servant. Now you get to worship me forevermore. For eternity. Where there is no love of fire. Where there is no sin. Where there is no time. Where there is nothing but joy, grace, and mercy. Which one sounds more appealing to you? A lake of fire? And torment? And eating of the flesh? Or praise and worship? To our heavenly Father, yeah, yeah, yeah. for all eternity, yeah, yeah, yeah. forevermore. I want you to think of your favorite praise and worship song. And you think, man, that's, it can't get any better. Do you know that there'll be music like that played all the time, times a hundred of its sound, all the day long? <coughs> And, you know, we always say, we, I think we talked about this on our way up to Tennessee. You know, we talked about what it's going to look like. Maybe I heard somebody preaching, preaching it or something. They said that they were in a funeral at a, at a graveside, and they were scared because they didn't want to fall in a hole when Jesus came back. And I got to laughing about that, and I said, you don't want to fall in a hole when Jesus comes back. All dead in Christ shall rise, and they're going to ascend to heaven, and I'm going to be the first to be knocking everybody out of the way to get to the front of the line. But you know, we're not going to see anything. We ain't going to remember our first thing, because I want everyone in here, everyone in here do this right here. Go. That's how, that's how quick it's going to happen. You can't breathe that fast. It says, he's coming back in a blinking, twinkling of an eye. That's, that's that fast. Do you know that you can blink one day and be here blink, blink and be in heaven? That's pretty fast. I think about that all the time. When I'm outside and I'm doing all kinds of things, I'm thinking, I get sweat in my eyes and I begin to wipe it away. And I'm thinking, you know, Lord, one day when we blink, there's so much going to happen in the blink of an eye. There's going to be a trumpet sound. There's going to be coming back. We're gonna, we're gonna get in a blink of an eye. We're gonna see them coming back on a white horse. We're gonna get see, in a blink of an eye. We're gonna get to see all this. If that don't excite you, you don't have an excitement button. <laughs> it is for all who believe in Him, for all who trust in Jesus as their Savior and Lord, for everyone that trusts. I'm sorry, for everyone that truly be believes that his disciples, I miss my notes are all jacked up. I'm going to start all over again. He's coming back for those who believe and trust in him. For those who trust that the Lord and Savior is there with them. He is the one that has healed them. He is the one that has delivered them. Amen. He is forgiveness. He is salvation. He is eternal life. Praise God for His love, for His mercy, and His endless grace. Amen? But Jesus did not stay there 
on that Friday after they took him down and they took him to the tomb? That was on a Friday. But everybody knows there was a day coming. Does anybody know what that day is? It's called Sunday. It's called Easter. Friday happened, but Sunday's coming. He conquered and powered the sin of the death of the tomb. He would come out of the tomb, rolled the, the stone away, and he was gone. And Jesus' death was followed by his resurrection. You can't keep my Jesus down. That happened on Easter Sunday. He had a borrowed tomb. Does anybody know what borrowed means? That means you only use it for a short time. Now I'm going to tell you something. When you die, are you going to borrow a casket? Are you going to borrow a hole to put you in? No, that's for until the Lord comes back. But I'm going to tell you something. My Lord knew that he only needed a borrowed tomb. Because see, he wasn't going to stay there long. He already had this thing all planned out. And I'm sure that he got together with his family. He said, now listen, y'all ain't going to believe what's about to happen. But just borrow a tomb because I'm not going to be there long. And they probably looked at Jesus and said, you know, lost your mind. People don't come, they don't, they don't raise themselves from the dead. Jesus said, just listen and do what I tell you. Just borrow the tomb. Because see, Sunday's coming. And there's something about to happen. When y'all come to that hole in the side of the earth and they roll away the tomb, and there's only going to be two things they see in there. They're going to see the grave clothes where I used to lay. And they're going to find a napkin. They're going to find a folded napkin. It ain't going to be with the grave clothes. It's going to be set aside. Now this is where I want to stop and preach for a minute. Because see, I'm going to tell you something. There's something very significant about the, the, the napkin. Because see, though, back in those days, when you sat down and you folded your napkin and you placed it on the table, that meant... You wasn't finished. And God symbolized the napkin by folding it and placing it away from the grave clothes because it was a symbol. And he was saying, I am not finished. I am coming back. I am the Redeemer. I am the Savior. I am the one with the miracle worker. I am the Lion of the tribe of Judah. That's what he was trying to tell everybody. John 20, verse 7 says, And the napkin that was about his head, not lined with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place all by itself. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Only Jesus would think, as he come out by the grave, but wasn't nobody there. <coughs> Folding napkin. And I think he might have been smiling the whole time and giggling to himself. And he said, You know what? I'm going to show the world that they can't kill me. I'm going to show the world that I love them so much that I'm coming back one day. And this is a symbol that I'm not finished. Has anybody ever thought about the napkin? See, we think about the grave clothes because it's not there anymore. Well, honey, I hate to tell you, but if you open the, the tomb, or if you walk in the tomb, and you don't see a body, there ain't nobody there. But we miss the significance of the napkin. The napkin is the symbol. I'm not finished. I'm still working on your behalf. On your behalf, your behalf, your behalf, your behalf. All of our behalfs. I'm going to tell you something. Has anybody ever been sick? I'm talking really sick. And you say, Lord, I know that man can't take care of this. And Lord, I know that your word says to ask. 
and I'm asking you right now. And I know your word says that you are the healer. And I'm asking for a healing in my body. We ever been there? I ain't got many hands and feet. And you might, Jesus, has pulled me out of the fiery furnace. My Jesus has pulled me out of the storms that I thought I was about to lose. My Jesus is the only one who's a healer. Amen? Well, Pastor, he's not complete. Heal me yet. Well, you better get a seatbelt because it's about to happen. All you have to do is have the faith and to know that Jesus is our healer. All we have to do is pray without ceasing. All we have to do is call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Church, Jesus was saying, I am not done yet. Amen. He's coming soon and very soon for you and I. Yeah. Today we can either decide to have a personal relationship with Jesus or we can decide not to have a personal relationship with Jesus. But I can promise you two things. If you have a relationship with Jesus, when the time comes and you transition, you're going to heaven. If you don't have a relationship, you're still going to transition. But it's going to be very, very hot for you one day. Very hot. <laughs> You know, there's a lot of churches today preaching that we live on the hill. We live, this is hell on earth. This is what we have to endure. This is hell. There is no such thing as hell. This is it. It's all thing. When we, when we transition, we're all in heaven. That is false teaching. Amen. That is a lie from the pits of hell. Amen. If you think this is hell, you are in for a rude awakening. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. This is the greatest time, regardless of any trash talking, garbage speaking government out there lying to you what they're trying to do mm -hmm. this is the greatest time to witness God with you this is the greatest Easter you will ever witness yeah, next year maybe a little better, next year maybe but this is the best one yet so far Amen. because see in 2023 it started a couple years ago but in 2023 God has been moving so fast and so miraculously that we can't even contain it yet. God has been doing things. He's raising the dead. He's healing the sick. Demons are coming out of people. I'm telling you, revival, he's broke free. And in schools, there is things happening everywhere. And I'm going to tell you this. We're going to get on this topic. And it may make Facebook mad. They may take me down. But I told my wife, everybody has either seen on Facebook or in the news that they got a transition on a beer commercial. And everybody's mad because that person is on their beer can. And now they've got a whiskey company saying they're going to the woke community. And everybody's pouring it out. And everybody's mad. And you know what I said? I told Becky, I said, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Because you're using a demonic thing to get people from stop drinking. You don't love the homosexuals, I will love them to death. But God loves them too. Amen. And God can use anybody in any situation at any time that he sees fit to stop. Well, think about this. <coughs> COVID happened. And there wasn't no football game. There wasn't no Basketball games, there wasn't no NASCAR races where people could go to. But God did say, All these big arenas, I'll use for my name. So, right. 2023, the first two days in, He used the NFL arena, and He used social media, and He used all of news media, not only to spread forth His gospel, but to, for public prayer. 
That's my God working. So don't think it is a coincidence that people put demonic things on such demonic items. God's working, even in alcohol. Got real quiet. I said this once before, and I'm closing. And I'm going to tell you, this is how God works. I'm going to tell you two things. And I'm going to be What is an atheist? An atheist is supposedly someone that does not believe in heaven or hell. They just believe we exist, we die, and I guess we fertilize the earth. I don't know. But they believe there's no... God, they believe there's no devil. Amen. But in 2023, Satan lost that battle yet. Because my God used not only one of the biggest, largest schools in the world, but they were based on atheism and they broke out in revival. Amen. They've got people that say they're atheists that is going to a church house to prove the Christian's wrong and sit in a service and get such under conviction. They want to see what this is all about. They walk up to the front and they get saved. Now they're preaching the gospel. That's already started in this year. And we're only five months in. God can use Satan to turn things around. That's my life. There was a woman... Who didn't have anything to eat. Y'all heard the story of those that hadn't been here in 15 years again. There was a woman that didn't have anything to eat. And she prayed and she said, God, she walked out of the patio and she said, God, you know we don't have anything to eat in this house. And I've got children here that I'm trying to feed. And I need some food to put in their belly. Well, the atheist that lived across the street heard her praying that prayer. And he said, I'm going to prove to that woman that God is real. So he went down to the store and he bought hundreds of dollars worth of groceries. And he put them at the front door of her house and knocked on the door and took off running. And she come out of that house and said, Hallelujah. Jesus, you did it again. You filled my pantries. You fed, you fed my, my children. You, fed, you filled their bellies. You have done way above and beyond what I even could have thought you could have done. And the atheist jumped out of the bushes and said, Ha ha, your God's not real. I put those groceries there to prove to you that God's not real. See, I'm the one that's feeding your family. She said, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You've done it yet again. You fed my family. Their bellies are full. And the atheist says, can you not hear me, woman? I told you, God's not real. I'm the one that put that food there. She got up, she said, hallelujah. Jesus, you can even use Satan and his little imps to feed my family. You can even use Satan to fill my pantry. That's how my God works. Hallelujah. Amen, Brother Ray? Yeah. That's how my God works. Amen. Never underestimate the power of Jesus. Amen. 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 Can you see what Christ died for? Can you see what he did for you on that Friday? Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We take that word, John 3, 16, for granted every day because it has been used in commercials. It's been used on the back of them. football helmets. It has been used in social media. And people have let that word go dormant. But that's one of the most powerful scriptures in the Bible. Because he died and he loved us so much that we don't have to go to hell. 
We don't have to go to hell. Maybe the sick and the George. 